What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of... The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related. We don't bore you. We get into it. Let's do it. No matter how you know, get it done. 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 What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode. As always, in case you don't know, 65% of people watching this right now aren't subscribed and hitting that subscribe button and that bell for all notifications always does wonders for the channel and I would greatly appreciate it. We drop new episodes of Forever News Monday through Friday where we cover anime, manga, nerd culture, and just everything around it um, in the news cycle. So yeah, definitely if you want to be notified, hit that subscribe button and that bell. I don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's get to these stories now. Okay, and I'm getting a couple of different sources that are telling me a couple of different things, but a Essentially, in a nutshell, it seems as though Dr. Stone is about to end at any moment, it feels as though. Because I got a couple of different sources telling me a couple of different things. I guess for starters, let's go with a little bit more uh, tame than more in advance notice. Because it says here, courtesy of the unofficial Weekly Shonen Jump Twitter account, Dr. Stone is reaching its climax next week on Weekly Shonen Jump issue number 14. The series is receiving a color page and a page increase in the same issue. Regarding ending affirmations, the series is indeed going through the same pattern series such as Haikyuu, The Promised Neverland, and Kimetsu no Yaiba ended with. Still, take everything with a grain of salt until further information comes next week. So I'm wondering, like, what does that mean? Are they meaning, like, the ending is going to have, like, a time skip with, like, kids and stuff like that? Because I want to say maybe one or two of those has, like, you know, a time skip of them older and stuff like that. So maybe that's what they're saying. Uh, but that's one source that says, like, yo, it's entering its climax next week. However, there's another source that says not something else entirely. It says that Dr. Stone manga is going to end within the next few chapters, presumably in two chapters on March 7, 2022 and that's from Annie News and Facts. They said that they believe it's going to be two and if you add one plus one with what Weekly Shonen Jump's unofficial Twitter account said regarding that it's going the same route as the promised Neverland, uh, Demon Slayer, Kamesa no Yaiba, it might be the case that they are able to pinpoint, oh, okay, so this chapter is just like one of those second to last chapters. Next week, we're probably going to get the final chapter. I don't know, but it seems as though potentially within the next couple of weeks, Dr. Stone might be completely coming to an end. Very, very interesting you know because you hear these things for a long time it's been a, i want to say what like a year year and a half or so that it's been said that dr stone was coming to an end that it was uh, you know on its final hoorah and then to hear now that not only is it coming to an end but it might be ending within the next couple weeks that is wild this generation of shonen is coming to an end we're already like it's funny because people like myself that's been around since you know before naruto bleach you know the original big three ended or whatnot like i was around for that generation and now i'm almost coming to the end of an entire new generation. Dr. Stone was a part of that new My Hero Academia Black Clover, yada yada, and Dr. Stone's ending. We know My Hero is on its final arc and potentially going to end by the end of this year. Black Clover seems like it could potentially, if uh, Yuki Tabata decided within the next few chapters, he could pull the plug as well. We're entering new grounds for Weekly Shonen Jump Magazine, and it's freaking crazy though. Like, I did not, this one hit me by surprise very heavy because I'm like, Wait a minute, manga's gonna end within the next couple chapters. It's it's heading towards its climax. What the hell is going on? And again, I know people have been saying that Dr. Stone feels like it's an endgame for a little bit now, but it's crazy, man. Seeing another one bites the dust. But of course, all good things must come to an end. And despite the fact that people love Dr. Stone, I'm personally a more fan of the anime just because I have a blast just sitting back and enjoying and all the little science facts and all of that cool stuff. And just in general, I really enjoy the adaptation. So I'm more of an anime guy and I'm hoping that they do a faithful adaptation now that I'm thinking because what could this mean for the future of the anime? I mean, things are a little bit different now where a series can end in terms of the manga's run and the anime still going, hence a la Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, you know, the manga ended um, quite some time ago now and we're still getting new seasons of the anime. So there's a possibility they could do that. I don't know if Dr. Stone is popular enough to support itself without its manga at least being present to say, hey, people remember this, care about it. So we gotta wait and see. But yeah, Dr. Stone heading towards its climax and and it very well could potentially end within the next two chapters on March 7th. 
what a speedball dog <laughs> i can't even imagine right now like yo shonen jump is about to have again a major breakdown like i i went through this where everything started leaving bilzy bub toriko katekyo hit mary born naruto bleach and it's about that time dr stone fans enjoy while it's here next up let's change the vibe a little bit let's talk about the top 50 best-selling manga of the week and of course as always the stats are courtesy of jose underscore k over on twitter so let's start off with uh, volumes 50 or places 50 through 41 and i feel like we're gonna be once again seeing a lot of familiar faces and i think until some of these movies start to leave theaters it's gonna be this way because a good chunk of volumes 50 through 41 is yet again riddled with jujutsu kaisen volumes surrounding it is stuff again like number 50 my dress up darling with 12,000 this week my dress up darling at 41 then we got a little mystery to luna kari there at 42 um let, let's jump over let's see what the next list is looking like volumes or places 40 through 31 at 40 is worst gaiden zenton sensei and i have no idea what the hell that series is but kind of looks cool it looks like a dope series there wow okay then moving up a little bit let's see let's see what witch watch witch watch volume 4 that's a more newer series in weekly shonen jump i haven't seen much buzz for it but in 10 days it has done 32,407 copies with its latest uh week doing 15 thousand copies so witch watch it's doing i i think it's doing enough to survive but uh that's another one that i could see going the way of like what just happened with magu chan i can see witch watch even though it's been lasting right like it's four volumes now at this point i can see witch watch getting canned i just don't hear much talk about it it doesn't get like the you know cult following like sakamoto days so we'll see i mean it's honestly in the ballpark of what sakamoto days does sales wide so it's doing better than sakamoto days to a certain degree but we'll wait and see uh then moving forward a little bit again a little more jujutsu kaisen we got at number 33 let's try and pronounce this ready we got mikata ga yo wa sugete mikata ga mikata ga yo wa sugite hojo maho ni teshi teta kyute mahoshi sui Oh my god. Suiho Sarate. Oh, I, I, I give up. I give up. I'm gonna lie. I'm getting, I'm getting like a, a, an anxiety attack just trying to read this shit. I, I give the hell up. Yeah, there's that series right there. Volume 2 of it did 17,000. Whatever the heck you call it. Holy cow. That was... I, I'm gonna have nightmares about trying to pronounce that one. Then we got a 32 Tokyo Revengers. Volume 25. Another 17.5 maybe a million next week if not definitely the following week then we got places 30 through 21 jujutsu kaisen volume zero another 18,000. god damn keep running it up yo we got number 28 remember this one i made a video a first impression reaction uh to the first couple episodes of it redo of healer in case you don't uh remember what it is it's like some revenge twisted thing where dude like he's getting his revenge after being tortured and all sorts of stuff and he's able to heal it's an experience and a half and a ptsd inducing experience to watch redo of healer i ain't gonna lie like i, I still ain't recovering it's been like a year plus but okay so we got volume 10 there and uh 18 000, wow 18 000 the pride people that bought those volumes hey nah i don't want to judge people it is what it is if you're into some sick shit you're into some sick shit <laughs> <No>. <laughs> then we got volume 27 of twin star exorcist 21 000 in 10 days total 41 000 not bad not bad then we got volume 6 of another series that i'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce in seven days 21 000 then at number 21 so it fell off because i want to say it was top 10 last week it fell off a little bit my hero academia team up mission volume 3 with 22,000 i think that's really good numbers for this random spinoff that nobody really talks about so shout outs to that then we got places 20 through 11 we got at number 20 nobunaga concerto volume 22 this is something that i've never read <laughs> uh, we got yoku wa wakaranai Kate. yo who is translating these names jesus christ yeah because looking at this 20 through 11 again i can't really pronounce some of these shits and i'm not going to attempt so we're gonna jump straight over to the top 10 there we go at number 10 at number 10 volume 18 of jujutsu kaisen with 35,000 dope stuff seraph of the end in 10 days almost 70,000. so it's still a, a, a decent seller it's interesting the the author wants to uh wrap up of Owari no Seraph, but finally maybe they've gotten to that point where it's like okay we could do it or you know whatever's happening behind the scenes then we got Yoamushi Pedal volume 76 I never understand how many how does it have so many volumes with 37,000 in six days like wow that that dude's eight though you got to think because 76 volumes 
Jesus. And then we got an Isekai series. We got, is that one of the slime series? Tensai Shitara. Yeah, I'm not sure. The Fable, The Second Contact Volume 2 with 49,000, almost 100,000. Wow, what is that? Almost 100,000 in 10 days. Not bad at all. We got Death March, Kara, Hajimaru, Isekai, Kios. Kyoku? Wow, I'm butchering shit. This is the butcher episode. We're gonna call it Yo, the butcher's coming. Benny, shout outs to Benny. Zelda. Then we got top three. We got Kamitachi ni Hiro Warete Otoko with 70,000. God damn, dog. I need to get up on some of these shits. Uh, number two, I I've heard of Chihaya Furu. I didn't realize it was still going. Volume 48, 77,000. Okay, I still got a following. And um cranking out on top of everything at number one yet again second week in a row in 10 days with a 10 day total of 548,000. we got my hero academia volume 33 with 233,000 copies this week uh doing fantastic it's crazy that my hero is supposed to end this year and it looks like it's going to end this year because it feels like it's going to end this year it's it's kind of crazy and it's my hero academia look at the sales look at those sales over half a million in 10 days that is marvelous honestly so it's gonna be wild to see um shueisha put that thing down but i guess only time will tell right we gotta wait and see i don't know like how much more in the magazine is really all that successful to carry the magazine once you let go of a series like my hero something to think about i mean we got some hitters some heavy hitters and stuff but my hero half a million in 10 days and nothing to sniff at yeah that's the top 10 best selling manga volumes of the week uh, always a treat. Okay, people, next up, Hunter Hunter fans down bad. If there's a little piece of article news somewhere, something, Fanab is gonna have to find this so I can talk to you guys and say, hey, there's something relevant in the world of Hunter Hunter considering the author is three years plus with no chapter. Left everybody just like, yeah, yeah I'm gonna get it done. Oh, oh, I'm... I get it done when I get it done, dog. Like, it's crazy. But uh, we got a little bit of fun stuff going on in the world of Hunter x Hunter. Because apparently they put out the official Goongi game. You remember Goongi? That's what the king, the ant king was playing with Kamugi, if I'm not mistaken. That was her name. They were playing that game Goongi. It says here, Hunter x Hunter's Goongi board game gets first official real life set. The fictional Goongi board game in Yoshihiro Togashi's Hunter x Hunter manga series is getting its first official real life set for anyone to play. Although the game's rules were not explained in detail in the original manga universal music japan recreated the pieces and rules the object of the game is to checkmate the opponent's king by maneuvering pieces on a nine by nine board besides the advanced rules depicted in the series like stacking up to three pieces and placing your pieces wherever you like at the start of the game there are also entry level beginner and intermediate level rules the company released a four minute explaining video on its youtube channel on monday to accompany the product's launch a regular version featuring just the board and pieces and a high-end version with, which also comes with pieces holders and cases available for order in japan through the universal music store online until may 8th and the orders are expected to ship on september 16th and it's approximately 41 dollars. i ain't gonna lie 41 dollars doesn't sound completely ridiculous because i'll see like the you know dragon ball monopoly board for like somewhere in that ballpark so 41 dollars for this new game that's you know based on a really <laughs> hype game from hunter hunter and considering um you know it's it's a wasteland for hunter hunter related stuff i think that's a fair deal i mean importing it if you're like in the west and stuff that's probably if it's going for 41 probably gonna run you about like 70 something bucks to get it over here maybe even 80 depending where you're at whatnot probably on shipping and all that stuff usually it goes double especially if you can't get it through those stores whatever so you're probably gonna pay a hefty a hefty fee but either way 41 bucks and you get to play and relive Goongi Yoshihiro Tagashi here's my plea you got me talking about Goongi board games to you know try to fill the void for Hunter Hunter fans you got us down bad you got us down real bad come back already dog come back come on come on come on you know you want to come on but yeah people Hunter Hunter Goongi real life yeah. Okay, people, next up, it seems as though Call of Duty is going balls to the wall with the continual crossovers of Attack on Titan. We recently talked about Attack on Titan having crossovers with Call of Duty, and it, it just didn't look the greatest. But now I'm hearing, and there's an article out, we're going to talk about it here, that there's more Attack on Titan-related stuff because the Armored 
Titan is out on Call of Duty, and wow, <laughs> I, I, I don't even really know much of what to say for this one. Let's just, I guess, get to the article and we'll talk then. Attack on Titan's Armored Titan invades Call of Duty in new bundle. Call of Duty Vanguard and Call of Duty Warzone Pacific are officially armoring up with the addition of the new Tracer Pack Attack on Titan Armored Titan Mastercraft bundle. That's right, the Armored Titan is busting through the walls to deliver everything from special weapons to an Armored Titan Operator skin, and it's all available now. Items you'll find within the pack include Armored Strength Assault Rifle, the Colossus Sniper Rifle, and the Kenny the Ripper inspired anti-personal pistol weapon. Roland Zimmet of the Barbarian Faction can suit up in the the Armored Titan Operator Skin, and you'll be able to customize your emblem with the symbols of the three walls and adorn weapons with the Titan Serum Charm. And it has a shot of what looks like, again, the Armored Titan holding an armored pistol uh, or an armored gun. And okay, maybe maybe it'd be cool. I I'm not familiar. It says like like if you're operating it like a tank almost, so that kind of makes sense. And I guess that kind of be could be cool. It doesn't look as bad as like the other one did where they had, what was it? It was like a guy cosplaying as levi or some shit this one it kind of looks a little weird it doesn't look exactly but eh, it doesn't bother me as much as the other dlc pack did of attack on titan that one if i did play cod i could see myself picking that up that looks kind of like cool and hey you know i'm playing the armor titan i'm playing call of duty yeah but yeah uh attack on titan and, and call of duty's crossovers is not finished yet um armor titan and call of duty what is it is in both of them yeah it's in uh warzone pacific and vanguard so yeah if you want to get your call of duty attack on titan armored whatever on you can do that yeah, I don't know. I'm just never a big fan of. Again, I'm not a Call of Duty guy. I'm not. A, I'm not a first-person shooter guy. I'm sorry. Okay, people. Next up is a follow-up story to something we was talking about. I want to say sometime last week regarding the big, massive return of Futurama. Yeah, I heard Futurama is supposed to be returning. I think there was like 20 episodes ordered for Hulu. All of that hoorah! I, I believe it was also announced that Futurama was headed back to Adult Swim, so that was a really big deal as well. Like a lot of really cool things going for Futurama. However, John. DiMaggio, um, and maybe rightfully so. I'm not judging him. I'm not judging anything right now. I'm just giving you guys the facts. John DiMaggio, voice of Bender, will not be returning. It's somewhat of a salary dispute and it's also just, it seems a little bit more like he's trying to take a stand uh, of, you know, for in general, everybody. Some people might argue it's selfish. Some people might say, yo, pay them what they're worth. This is what we know thus far. Futurama's John DiMaggio addresses absence from Hulu Revival. Not voicing Bender is about self respect. On February 9th, Hulu ordered a 20 episode revival, Cohen and Matt Gronin's beloved animated series, which will welcome back a number of original voice actors, including Billy West as Fry and Katie Siegel as Leela. At the time, a source told our sister site Variety that producers were hopeful DiMaggio would come back to voice snarky robot Bender, but acknowledged the role may need to be recasted. Deadline later reported that stalled contract negotiations were behind DiMaggio's absence, though he reportedly received an offer in line with the one given to West and Seagal for their returns, DiMaggio felt it, quote-unquote, was not competitive based on Futurama's previous success and name recognition. The Hulu revival was then announced without DiMaggio on board. Just to be clear, I don't think that only I deserve to be paid more. I think the entire cast does, DiMaggio clarified in a Twitter statement on Tuesday. Negotiations are a natural part of working in show business. Everyone has a different strategy and different boundaries. Their price some accept offers, some hold their ground. The actor went on to call Ben the part of his soul, adding that nothing about this is meant to be disrespectful to the fans or my Futurama family. It's about self-respect and honestly being tired of an industry that has become far too corporate and takes advantage of artists' time and talent. He concluded, though, that he is still hoping for the best regarding his potential return to the show. And of course, Futurama originally aired for four seasons on Fox from 99 to 2003, and it was returned from 08 to 2013. And now it's returning once again in 2023. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. Like, I, I want more Futurama, but I couldn't imagine Futurama, 20 episodes of Futurama with no Bender or recasted Bender. That was just John DiMaggio's portrayal, performance, and, and vocally, he's too unique. Like, where do you find a John DiMaggio at? You ain't gonna find a John DiMaggio, so... 
uh, maybe in the ninth hour they could squeeze in. Okay, he got it. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they came to an agreement or whatnot. And I'm not, I, at the end of the day, how could I go against John DiMaggio? I feel like realistically, yeah, if these, you know, I, I just reported on the Writers Guild for cartoons and animation, you know, going up against the industry basically saying, hey, we're not getting paid enough, probably is happening to the voice actors as well, especially they're not the same as on-camera roles and stuff like that. Probably John DiMaggio is sick of getting X, Y, and Z, and he feels he deserves. I mean, Futurama's been going for 20 plus years or some crazy shit right like what 23 years or something like that like it's been a long freaking time it'll be its 24th anniversary i believe by the time it arrives so yeah john dimaggio standing his ground i'm looking forward to seeing what happens i don't know if i would watch futurama without bender i'm gonna just keep it real or without john dimaggio's portrayal as bender because <laughs> what's futurama without bender i just i I, I don't know it's fry leela you know the, the other cast are great and everything and it's not all about bender but yeah, I, I don't know about this one, Chief. Either way, seems as though Bender is not returning, or at the very least, John DiMaggio is not returning uh, to reprise his role as Bender in the upcoming Futurama revival, but you never know. Okay, people, and last story of the episode. Without getting into any spoilers, because I'm not really spoiled myself, but some people might take it as spoilers, because the ending of Fire Force has come about. The manga in particular has ended, and a lot of people have been circulating. I've seen it. Briefly trending over on Twitter as well. The very final page of Fire Force. Because one of the things that we spoke about here on Forever News well, over a year ago now at this particular point. Is that the author Atsushi Okubo of Fire Force has said that he's not doing any more new manga. However, in the final page, just like they do with every shonen author and ongoing manga. It says here, thank you for reading. Please look forward to Okubo Sensei's next work. And again, they do that majority, I, I believe with majority of authors, right? So they said that and a lot of people were like, wait a minute, I thought he retired. And then at the end, the very last thing, and I'm not going to say what's happening or whatnot, but it definitely leaves a lot of questions, is the very last text that you see is, next is Soul World. Now, a lot of people are taking that as, oh god, Okubo is doing a new manga, it's going to be like Four Nights of the Apocalypse, and that's very well possible, because there are, you know, Four Nights of the Apocalypse is also in Weekly Shonen Magazine, it could be a new shtick that they're coming up with, or maybe a way to keep the author around a little bit longer or something like that, so he very well could be doing some spin-off series, more than likely to me, because they're separate companies, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, like Soul Leader is under one publisher, and Fire Force is under another don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure Soul Leader was Shogaku. Man. I might be off on that. Either way, um, more than likely what that means is next is Soul World in terms of next is Soul Leader essentially confirming that Fire Force is a prequel to Soul Leader. That's all I think what was done with that ending. Again, I could be totally off. I don't know the context of it. I don't know what happened in the last 130 chapters or something like that. Like it, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I'm going to assume that next is Soul World is just confirming that it in his own head canon, I guess you could say, or it is canon because it is, he's the creator at the end of the day. Um, Atsushi Okubo was saying that Fire Force is indeed a prequel um, to Soul Leader. That's what I got out of that. But again, it could be that's the big announcement or something like that. He's going to, you know, end Fire Force and start Soul World and it's going to be a big crossover. Again, I don't know how that would work. That would be insane, though, a crossover between Soul Leader and Fire Force. Again, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, Atsushi Okubo could turn into like the way Hiromashima is and you know have big crossovers with his big series and stuff like that but yeah next is Soul World curious what you guys think about that and your thoughts on all the stories we covered in this episode of Forever News craziest story favorite story best story something that I missed out on talking about let me know that's all I have for this one though thanks for watching I'm Forever World and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life boy have an awesome day peace in and you guys just watched another episode of have an awesome day. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. I'm just saying.